Two yachts, two crews, two skippers, two rivals. In Sydney, where we lay our scene. Two rivals, both victorious and defeated in contests past. Two rivals, faster and stronger than before. Bell, bell, bell. Destined to meet once more. Two rivals, one will win, one will lose in the classic that is the Sydney Hobart. There were some moments where the foot was right down and then it was like, oh, this is a ride. Nobody but nobody has any clue what's really going to happen. It's the old story of the Hobart, you've got to be in it to win it. All rivalries have history. 2010, Wild Oats 11 wins their fifth Sydney Hobart. Twenty eleven, Investec Loyal beats Wild Oats by three minutes to take a dramatic victory. Twenty twelve, Wild Oats bounces back to claim their sixth line honours. Twenty thirteen, Anthony Bell buys Rambler said to be the fastest super maxi in the world, now renamed Perpetual Loyal. 69th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race and all eyes are on the two leading boats in the fleet. Wild Oats 11 skippered by Mark Richards, six time line honours winner and race record holder. And Perpetual Loyal skippered by Anthony Bell who won in 2011. Both boasting new or improved boats, the rivalry between crews and skippers has reached a whole new level. Who will come out on top in the great race south? Time will tell. Mark Richards is here to win a race. This sport's in his blood from when he was a kid. He's lived and breathed it all the time. Every day he goes out there, he goes out there to win. He doesn't go for a social sale. I spoke to him last week. You know, I asked him about funny moments in the Hobarts. He says, we don't have funny moments on Wild Oats 11. We're there to win. Yeah, I said, now the forecast has changed, well, I think. It will change. Well, Anthony Bell, uh, he's, you know, from a different side of the fence, really. He's a different character than Mark Richards. Uh, while he still likes to win races and he's competitive from that point of view, uh, his, uh, his, his motivation for this event is also to raise money for charity for the Loyal Foundation. I'm sure Anthony Bell is doing this for charity, but underneath that skin, he really does want to win a race as well. It's been four years since he's been in this game. Mark Richards has done this race 11 times now. So Anthony Bell can be seen as a bit of an outsider coming in. I wouldn't go as far as saying an interloper, but certainly I think there's that little tinge of, uh, you know, who's this young kid on the block? And a fleet of 94 will head south this year, and of course it is headlined by the Battle of the Super Maxis. 77 boats last year, 94 this year, it's going to be an absolute cracker. The little boats are trying to get clear air and just trying to find some flattish water. What a way to start this incredible race, the Everest of Ocean Racing. There's the gun and they are away in the great race south. The 69th Rolex Sydney Hobart is underway. And this fleet is racing to get to North Head here in Sydney and get out of Sydney Harbour and continue south. What a spectacle. So I'd say it's a probably an even start between uh, Perpetual Loyal and Wild Oats. And the, the big thing now is who's got the angle right to the first mark? They are racing three abreast 
flying down Sydney Harbour. And you can just see while they start and open up now. Plenty of boat speed. Go, 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 go. And you can see Mark Richards there on Wild Oats 11. He's just doing everything he can to try and get that little bit extra speed out of Wild Oats 11. He needs to get the nose of Wild Oats 11 in front of Petrol so they can turn cleanly at the mark. Let's go, main on, come on. Have a look at that side by side, two of the world's great super maxis, Wild Oats 11, the defending champ, and Perpetual Loyal, which we know to be and is regarded as one of the fastest 100 footers anywhere in the world. Closing in on the turning mark now, and this is going to be a pretty wild right-hander. Perpetual Loyal is edging right up beside Wild Oats 11. This is a show of muscle. You ready? Only 622 miles to go. Wild Oats has luffing right here. He can cause the boat on the right-hand side of him, and that's a luff there, so Anthony Bell's responding. Wild Oats have pulled away, heading to the mark, and Perpetual Loyal, just for some reason, does not come down quick enough. Just over eight minutes into this Rolex Sydney Hobart race. Well, we certainly have the match race already in this, this great start. But there you've got the top seven boats very close indeed. Wild Oats 11 has the upper hand. Mark Richards got what he likes. He will be first out of the heads as they head to open ocean. Here comes the rest of the boats. Just rounding the first mark back at the heads. The competition is no less intense back amongst these guys because they know their class, they know their competitors and they are racing as hard as they can at the moment. Well, any one of these boats can win on handicap, and that is the overall prize. And as you look at Wild Oats 2, uh, the boat which has had so much work leading into this year's race, to try and make it better and faster, you can see the, the canting keel just underneath the waterline there. Amazing piece of engineering, 12 tonnes of torpedo-shaped lead ballast that can swing at it up to 40 degrees and just get the boat into its optimum speed. They're trekking south now. The Sydney Hobart fleet is well on its way. They have rounded the final mark outside Sydney Harbour. And you're looking at first and second, Wild Oats 11 and Perpetual Loyal. It is game on. This race has developed into one of real personal rivalries. It started off 1945 as mates coming to Hobart uh, and they wanted to race each other, that's what they did. It's now developed into personal rivalries on a huge scale. It doesn't really matter whether it's Maxis or whether it's other boats down in the fleet. If you're sailing uh, one of five Sydney 38s in the fleet, you only have eyes for the other four Sydney 38s. You've raced against them time and time again, it's rivalry. These people know each other. They don't hate each other, but they, they get on all right afterwards. But if they can thumb their nose at each other during the race, go close to them and say, we're going past you now, just in case you didn't notice, we're going past, we're better than you are, they'll do it every time. And it's always been like that. This has always been a race of extreme rivalries, of big personalities, and they have egos and they want to win. They don't want to finish second. They don't want to be left out in the dock watching everybody else celebrate because it isn't what they were built for. Rivalry is always a great thing for any sport, you know, it's great. There's the teams you love to love and there's the teams you love to hate, you know, and um, I'm not sure which one of those we are. The target on the backs just gets bigger and bigger every year. You know, it's just one of those things. And you know, everything you read these days, it's all about wild oats and beating wild oats in the Sydney Hobart race. And you know, it was never intended to be like that for us. We, uh, you know, we're just a bunch of hackers who love sailing, and we've got a great, great boat in wild oats. I think there's no question. Loyal wants to knock us off. I mean, more than anything, you know, probably a lot more than we want to knock them off. You know, so and that can be an advantage to us. If you want it too hard, it can be, it can go against you. Look. Anthony Bell, 
from the loyal team. I mean, it's really exciting, you know. It's great to have tough competition like those guys. Anthony wants to win, there's no doubt about that. They bought the most powerful 100 foot supermax in the world, you know, by a country mile. So the thing's it's an absolute weapon in certain conditions and um, they're going to be really hard to beat. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. We have a high degree of respect for that team and um, you know, it was noticed when we actually beat the guys in 2011 that the first people into the bar to have a drink with us were the, the team from Wild Oats. They're, they're a great racing team and on top of that they're, um, they're a wonderful group of sportsmen. But uh, when it comes down to it before it, uh, yeah, it's an absolute certainty that Rico and I will be going at each other for sure. Getting to the new uh, Perpetual Loyal was um, you know, a, a decision that was made after sitting the year out, um, having enjoyed the elation of winning in 2011 and finding ourselves a year later sitting on the couch watching the race and watching Yacht Tracker and uh, you know, I really missed being in the game. And I think about two to three minutes after Wild Oats across the line I was on the phone to our tactician and also to our general manager um, saying like, find me speedboat, uh, Rambler, uh, wherever it is in the world, let's get it and let's get back into the game. We'd known about Rambler for a long time before it. It was the, you know, the new design of Super Maxis and in, in racing the old Loyal and, and the Wild Oats uh, Rifle Pew type design, they were quite similar um, in how narrow they were, um, in, in their displacement, um, everything, their riding moment, the whole lot. Uh, but we'd seen this thing come out of New Zealand only a couple of years prior and it was different and it was fast and it was breaking records. It's like a Volvo 70 footer on steroids. Everything's heavy and everything's big. Um, and it also too brings risk um, to our sailing as well. It's definitely a big gamble. One thing I've learned in sailing is the wind is free, but nothing else is. It's day two of the Sydney Hobart and the fight between Wild Oats 11 and Perpetual Loyal has lived up to all expectations. First, Wild Oats led, then Loyal, now Oats is out in front again. It's punch versus counter punch in the fight to the finish. The thing I love about Sydney Hobart is, is just the whole aura of the race. The lead up to the race, the competitors, you know, you've got some of the most iconic, you know, ocean racing sailors in the world competing in this race. I don't think anybody, you know, turns up and says just love going sailing in Bass Strait and getting smashed by 50 knot winds and uh, 20 metre waves um, is just the most fun in the world. It's an amazing event and it gets better every year. That's been the great thing about it for the last eight years for us. You know. As a kid, I used to watch the start every year, the boats, the cameras, the helicopters, the, the sheer festival of it all and the sheer exhilaration um, behind it. It is you know, one of the most you know, sought after ocean racing trophies in the world and uh, to be part of that is a real privilege. To get a victory in this race and you know, I don't think there's any crew who'd ever get off a boat after winning this race and say yeah that was pretty easy, you know, we were looking for uh, more challenge later on. At the very highest level, rivalry can define the outcome in performance. Rivalry can be the very thing that leads athletes to transform themselves in the heat of the moment under pressure when it counts, or it can be the thing that is destructive and can destroy performance. And that depends on the perception of the athlete, the team, the coach and the management in that situation. Rivalry is something that can help or is going to harm. If I go outside and compare myself to the competition, the opponent, and recognise that actually I don't have the coping resources to respond, I'm in trouble. If I go outside of myself and compare myself to the competition and the opponent, and then have the ability to respond by focusing on my strengths, it becomes something that helps and fuels the inner flame, that motivation and drive to succeed. Great athletes, the very best athletes, use rivalry as the very thing that drives performance excellence when it matters under pressure to achieve their very best. While Wild Oats and Loyal fight it out for line honours, the battle for overall handicap victory is as intense as the weather along the Tasmanian coast. This is a message from the Bureau of Meteorology. There's currently a strong northerly flow across the state of Tasmania and the surrounding coastal waters, which has been increasing throughout the afternoon. A 
coal truck and a truck are approaching from the west and are expected to cross the state and the race area during this evening, bringing a strong westerly change with it. The coal truck moving over this evening is expected to bring a westerly change of up to 35 knots this evening and increasing up to 40 knots overnight into Sunday morning. Sea states expected with the cold front and the increase in wind are expected to rise to 4 metres. The swell is also expected to increase from the west to southwest around about 3 metres overnight. The real prize for so many of these guys, and that's why they're there, is to win the Tattersalls Cup, uh, put that real feather in your cap and say, I've won a Rolex Sydney Hobart race, I've won it on handicap. Which yacht's going to win this year on handicap? Really, uh, it's so hard to tell because there's so many variables still to come into play. But the way the weather pattern's looking, you'd have to say it's one of the top end boats. One of the bigger boats, say from 50 feet upwards, they will more than likely win the race on time. Last night, uh, while that's 11, led the 94 yacht fleet into Bass Strait and then hit the wall. We knew that there was a trough there. Everyone knew there was a trough there waiting as a trap. She slowed down, she lost speed, the others compressed and gained on her. But the guys did a great job getting through that light weather and they actually made a gain during the night. Oh, but then that. when they sailed out of the trough this morning, the rich got richer. They got into the breeze earlier than anyone else and away they went. They've opened up a lead now of some 20 plus miles. If Wild Oats 11 does win the Hobart race this year, I think the boys will look on this as being their best win ever. It was going to be the toughest and has certainly proven to be that. It's going to be a great victory for them and it's going to be a huge celebration. Day three and Wild Oats has proved too strong for perpetual loyal stretching her lead to over 40 miles in the race to Hobart. She finishes in a time of two days, six hours and seven minutes. Outside her race record of last year, but a victory just as sweet. You know, those guys did a fantastic job on the first line. You know, they put 13 miles on us very quickly and um, you know, fortunately the breeze came back in and we got moving again and sort of managed to hold our ground. And then yesterday morning, you know, first light we sort of started moving nicely and eventually saw them in, as a speck in the distance and uh, worked really hard all day to sort of get, get up to them and catch them and we actually eventually caught them and went past them and you know it just sort of kept going from there. We were actually really amazed how well Wild Oats went throughout the race you know and uh, even yesterday when it just got windier and windier we just got faster and faster compared to the other boats. What won this race for us, I mean, this, you know, obviously a great team and supported by a fantastic owner in Bob Oatley, but this is an amazing boat and um, you know, we saw you know, during this race again, it, we outlegged everyone in the end and just had you know, a speed edge over everyone, you know, and to see that out of a nine-year-old boat in this sport is very, very rare. Just a freak of a boat and you know, an amazing piece of equipment and I'm pretty sure that's all we got there in the end. Seven wins, God, who would have thought? I mean, it's just something you don't even dream about. But, you know, it's, it's something I don't think about until you actually get here and actually win a race, but we've done it seven times, which is pretty amazing out of, out of nine races. So it's something we're all very, very proud of, that's for sure. Loyal finishes some four hours later. I think we gave a good account of ourselves given the conditions. We would have naturally liked the conditions to be a bit more like they were in the last, you know, sort of quarter of the race. And I think um, they, they got away overnight. They, like I said, we parked and we stopped and then the guys got going straight after that and we didn't. Uh, they, got, they got under a cloud and got to get moving on the other side and we didn't. It just came to a dead set point and a stop. So, you know, within four hours they put 30 miles on us. That wasn't to be, so uh, we'll wait till next time. Day four, and with calculations verified, 50-foot Cookson Far designed yacht Victoire has been declared the overall handicap winner of the Tattersall's Cup. 
It's a fantastic achievement for skipper and owner Daryl Hodgkinson, who was sailing the boat in the race for the first time. I think that the, when we really got that heavy northeasterly and was blowing to 35 to 45, there were moments in the race where we had to believe in ourselves, we had to believe in the yacht, and we knew that this boat had done it before, so we let it go. We let it go. We knew we were only going to win this race if we pressed really hard and we just couldn't let our foot off the pedal. And there were some moments where the foot was right down, and there was like, oh, this is a ride. Rivalry turns sailing from a voyage into a competition. It's a chance to test yourself against another boat or crew, but rivals come and rivals go. The one true test for a sailor is the battle against the ocean. And it's that rivalry in the Sydney Hobart that will continue to endure. Next time on the Rolex Spirit of Yachting, we stay in Australasia for yet another classic, the Rolex China Sea Race. <laughs>